Hey everyone, Rick here, and welcome back. This is our third installment of a run-through for, oh yes, that's right, Escape the Dark Castle. Now, folks, go watch the other two if you haven't. I mean, we have fought tooth and nail to get out of this castle. Have we been successful yet? Well, you gotta go look at the other videos to find out. But today... We're going to take a couple more prisoners through the castle. And so, folks, <clears throat> here is my thought now as I show you a quick glimpse of the different prisoners that we could potentially uh, pick from. And today we are going to pick a balanced team. So I know there have been comments, Rick, it's time to pick a balanced team. I agree, we, we are going to pick a balanced team today. Also, people are like, use some of the expansion content, folks. I 100% agree. However, I want to give this one more shot using just the base game components in addition to Kickstarter expansion characters as well. So we are going to pick a balanced team, but we are going to use the regular base game stuff. And then in the future, we will, I promise, use some of the crazy expansion content. Content that gives these guys character traits, different crazy companions we might run into in the dungeon that become our ally, curses, plagues, all sorts of crazy things. So... Just to give you an idea of the various people we might run into. All right, we're back to the beginning. So now, let's pick a balanced team for this run-through. <clears throat> There's a few of these guys where they are heavy, heavy in one trait and very weak in the other two. I'm going to say no. So these kind of guys, let's put them to the side. I mean, it would not have been funny if we, accident if we randomly pick those guys and how terrible that would be if they had to you know roll might in one attempt that would have been a nightmare so thankfully we haven't run into any of those the hunter's another one of those so let's get rid of those three we have these five left if we were going to pick a balanced group out of these guys this is going to be tough are you kidding me because look everyone who's left except for one only has one of their weakest trait. So oh, this is going to be tough. And of course, this is just out of the prisoners that we have not used yet. I was thinking maybe we should try to make a balanced party using some prisoners that we have used. But you know what? No, let's use new people. Let me know in the comments if you'd prefer we try to make a balanced party out of other people also. So honestly, I think we should go with the Shepherd because they are at least the most balanced by themselves. And then we'll, we are going to need someone who is better at might and cunning. And I think that is going to be the cook. Because the Shepherd is good at wisdom. They're weaker on might and cunning. The cook is the best at might and cunning and very weak in wisdom. So that'll kind of balance out. Otherwise, what else do we have here? The shepherd's weak at might, so we probably wouldn't want those other ones that are also weak at might. This one's weak at cunning, but the shepherd is also fairly weak at cunning. So honestly, this may be a mistake. But honestly, these are the two I'm thinking of this time. The shepherd and the cook, they are each really good at one thing and then kind of balanced each other out a little bit on the other things. Okay, let's get on with it. Okay, so these are our, going to be our two characters this time, the shepherd and the cook. Here are their dice. And now it's time because we had... Okay, I'm not going to spoil what happened last time, but let's just say, you know, there may have been some chapter cards that we didn't actually end up getting to see last time. So I'm just shuffling all remaining chapter cards from the base game together here right now. And we're going to draw 15 to create our adventure this time. Okay, so here we go.
All right, so there are the 15 chapter cards. Here is the introductory card. Let's also give the item deck a quick little shuffle here, and we will be off to the races, folks. Say a prayer right now for the shepherd and the cook because, oh my gosh, I don't think this is going to end up going very well for them either. This is brutal. I'll be honest. This has been brutal. The past couple run-throughs. Not to give anything away, but yeah. Okay, so, boom, here we go. We're flipping over the first page. And as always, it says, and there are other start cards too. So it won't always be this one in the future. But here we go. All right. Setting the scene. After years of incarceration in the depths of the dark castle, you finally break free of your cell. In a small stone room adjoining the cell block stands an old wooden chest. The lock is open. Draw an item card per player now. All right, so here we go. Two players, a.k.a. two characters, so two item cards. And they are... An infested cheese wheel. Discard to restore one HP to all characters. That is fantastic. And then also a cunning concoction. Discard to apply a single cunning at any time. Oh, that is pretty darn good. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to give the infested cheese wheel to the cook. And honestly, that could have gone to either one of them. But this, granting an extra cunning... We're not an extra cunning. A cunning at any time. We're going to give to the shepherd, since the shepherd is the weakest at cunning. I'm also going to say now that we are going to have the shepherd lead us into the first chapter card. Plus, the cook should have the cheese, right? All right. You hear footsteps approaching. You must not linger here. You make for the exit, slipping away and disappearing into the darkness. Turn the first chapter card now. Oh, God, why do I have a bad feeling about this? Okay. <clears throat> oh, my God, are you kidding me? A creature stitched together using butchered animal parts scuttles toward you. It's so hideous you instinctively lash out, begin combat, but you get to make one attack before the first round, taking no damage. All right. Combat special. The first time this creature is defeated, before drawing an item card, roll a chapter die. If the result is might, it regenerates. You must restart combat and defeat it a second time. Oh. Oh my god. Okay, first things first, though, the shepherd gets to make the first attack. So, like it said here, we are going to start out with one wisdom and two more dice. So, we start out with a wisdom for sure. And then the monster also gets two more. And they are both might. Holy cow. All right, you know what? That's not terrible because as you can see, the cook is the best at might. Shepherd is the best at wisdom. So, and the shepherd gets to lash out first. So this is kind of a pre-combat attack. Let's hope he can maybe knock out something here. And he does. His wisdom, which we knew he was good at, knocks that out right away. Okay, so now combat begins. Just two mites here. The cook actually has a double might. He could potentially knock this out himself. But the shepherd isn't terrible at might. So let's find out what happens here. All right, and bouncing off camera was the cook's wisdom, which unfortunately does nothing. And that's hilarious. The cook rolled wisdom since that is the only wisdom on that entire die. But then the shepherd doing shepherd things actually does get a mite as well as a shield, which means the shepherd not only knocks out one of the mites, but also is going to avoid taking this wound because, as you can see, this butchered, crazy centipede looking thing does a wound each time, which means the cook. And I'm sorry, you know, for any first time viewers, how we had this all set up, both of these characters start with 18 health apiece. The cook, though, just took a wound. All right, so the second round of combat. Hopefully, this is the final round of combat. Both of these guys are going to be trying to knock out that last might. 
And we do, oh my gosh, look at that. They were totally ready to destroy this thing with might. Here's the problem, though. Now that we have defeated it once, we have to roll a chapter die, and if this lands on might, which it has a one in three chance of doing, this thing regenerates and we have to fight it all over again. Come on, anything but might. Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank goodness. It is a wisdom. Folks, we cruise through that first combat and we get for our troubles. All right. A rusted flail, one-handed weapon. Once per round of combat, when you roll cunning, you can roll again and choose which of the two results to apply. Let's go ahead and give this to the cook. He's the best at cunning, most, you know, chance of rolling cunning to make the most out of that item. All right, we're looking pretty... Okay, I don't want to jinx anything because we know what happened last time. Okay, boom. Next chapter card. Oh, God. To enter this door, you are forced to push aside thick thorn-covered vines. They spring to life, binding your wrists and hauling you into the thicket beyond. You, meaning the shepherd... Lose one HP. Hacking at the aggressive weeds eventually causes them to recede through the cracks in the old stone walls, leaving behind the belongings of previous victims. Draw two item cards. Folks, that is an exchange I will make. I'm not going to say night and day and twice on Sunday, but that's not a bad exchange for right now. So the shepherd does take a wound from the vines, but for that trouble, we get two item cards, and they are... An effervescent evasion potion, so when you would take damage, discard to avoid that damage, which is fantastic. And a rotten shield! Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Whenever you take damage, reduce the amount by one down to a minimum of, of one. This is a tough choice we have to make right now because... Again, we only have two hands. Each character can only hold two items. So we're going to have to get rid of something. And both of these are fantastic. You know what? No, we don't have to get rid of anything because guess what? I'm going to use this cheese wheel right now and gain one HP on both characters. And then we can divvy these up. Oh my gosh. How amazing is that? Okay, so what do we want to do with these now? We can always switch them in the future. So let's just give the evasion potion to the shepherd because he's currently still our party leader and he's more prone to damage uh, right now. And then we'll give the shield to the cook because he might be a little... Or she. You know, I always say he. I've always said he, but some of these are... I'm pretty sure are women. These both might be women. I have no idea. They look very masculine-ish, feminine-ish. I have no idea who's who. But anyway, that's the setup. All right, let's move on. Oh my gosh. As you pass a heavy wooden door, it flies open and a ragged madman bursts through. He wields his shackles as a weapon and his crazed stare sends a clear message. You stand between him and freedom. You, which is the shepherd, oh God, must try to roll might or a double in one attempt. If the shepherd is successful, the shepherd manages to deflect his wild flailing but we still have to begin combat. But if he fails, the shepherd is smashed aside and loses two HP. See, that is why we gave him that evasion potion. He could use it to avoid that if he doesn't roll might. So let's go ahead and do that first. Let's see if the shepherd can roll might or a double in one attempt. So he has a 50-50 shot here because he has two double icons and then one single might. That's the only other might other than the one in the shield. So he has a 50-50 shot here of avoiding those two wounds. And he does not. He rolls his wisdom. Do we use that potion now? 
I feel like it's a bad idea to use that so early on, but that is two wounds that we would avoid. It would free us up because after this combat, we'll get another item. So let's just go ahead and use this now and avoid those two wounds. But we now have to then begin combat. This guy's a beast. He has a might, a cunning, two more dice, and does two wounds each time. All right, so let's get that set up first. We have the might and the cunning. Boom. And then two more dice. And they are another might and cunning. Oh, geez. Okay. Well, that's interesting. All right, here we go. We're rolling both Shepherd and the Cook against this wild flailing madman. And we have a might and unfortunately a wisdom which doesn't do a damn thing. All right, so here's how this is going to end up. The might, of course, cancels out one of the mites. Oh boy, I am going to go ahead and use this discard to apply a cunning at any time. So that's going to take out one of the cunnings. Oh, I hope that was a good use for that and not something we would need in the future. But then the shield of the cook will reduce those two wounds to one. So it only takes one wound, but the shepherd, unfortunately, does take the full two wounds. All right, second round of combat now. We just have one might, one cunning to deal with. And, oh my gosh, that shepherd loves rolling wisdom, but the cook... Cook is hanging in there with us. He's He did another might, so we got rid of that. We still have a cunning left. But unfortunately, the shepherd takes two more wounds. Thankfully, to, due to his shield, the cook only takes one. All right, so now we have both of them. One cunning left. Come on, quit rolling wisdom. The shepherd is so wise, he can't stop rolling wisdom. All right, well, this isn't bad. It's not good, but it's not bad. We rolled two shields. None of which helps us right now. So neither one of them take any damage. Let's just go ahead and roll again. And we finally, thanks to the shepherd actually, the shepherd rolled his double wisdom cunning with the shield. So that takes out that last cunning. And again, for the second time, the cook rolled his one and only wisdom. All right. So boom, there we go. We've managed to sneak out of that combat. Away with a liquid luck, discard to re-roll your character die, applying only the second result. That's not bad, especially for the shepherd. He keeps rolling wisdom at the least opportune time. Watch, when we need him to roll wisdom, he won't. No, I shouldn't say that, shepherd. I'm rooting for you, bud. Okay, here we go. All right. A skeletal form lies slumped in the corner of this dark chamber. Beneath the dust of ages, it still clutches a moldering map. As a group, choose an option. I have not had a good track record at choosing the correct option. Okay, so we could move on. Something isn't right here. Turn the next chapter card or steal the map. Nominate a player to roll wisdom in three, two wisdom. Oh God, here we go. What did we just say? Nominate a player to roll two wisdom in three attempts. Success. The map leads to a hidden cache. Draw two item cards. Failure. The skeleton twitches and it wants to destroy you for stealing the map. Begin combat. And you know what? I'm Let's move on. I know, I know, but we've actually had some decent combats already, so it's not like we're itching to get in combat. Two more items would be fantastic, but honestly, look at this guy. He has all this. He'd have four dice and do two wounds each time. Let's move on. I am... That is my vote here. All right, so we are moving on. All right, boom. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? This passageway suddenly fills with harsh, whispered curses. Flames leap up from the wall-mounted torches to take on the form of a demonic warrior, tongues of arcane fire surging from its charred skull. As a group, choose an option. We could flee, but we all lose 2 HP dashing through the fire. Oh my god, and I forgot to switch. I keep forgetting to switch who is leading the party because obviously the cook has more health right now. But anyway, so we could flee and we'd all lose two or fight, begin combat. Now the combat special is whoever deals the final blow loses an HP as the demon vanishes in a burst of flame which cannot be blocked. What do we do here? What do we do here? That's a tough guy too. You know what? I'm moving on because we would all lose two HP now, or I doubt we would knock this out in one round of combat. 
So we would all lose two, plus a, someone else would lose another one anyway. If this lasted for at least two rounds, which I'm sure it would last two or more. So you know what? Let Discretion is the better part of valor here. Let's go ahead and move on. Yes, we lose two here. The cook, due to that shield, it doesn't say reduce the amount of wounds by one in just combat, it just says any time. So I assume that the cook only takes one of those two wounds here. All right, we are moving on. This doesn't look good. All right, a series of long blades swing from the ceiling of this narrow passageway. You study the pattern of their movement and prepare to dash through to the other side. In unison, all players must roll their character die along with one chapter die three times. Oh, folks. This is where we get cut down to size. Each time a player's character die matches the chapter die they rolled, they are caught by the blades and lose 2 HP. If a player rolls a double on any of the three rolls, they survive that roll without taking damage. Oh, good night. Okay. Man, we are so lucky we got that shield early on. So the cook is only going to take at most three wounds here, but the shepherd could take at most six wounds. That's two HP every time. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Let's do the cook first. So he uses his character die or she and one chapter die. And don't forget, we do this three times. Every time they match, that's one HP lost for the cook due to that shield. All right, and boom, even though that matches, it does say if a player rolls a double on any of the three rolls, they survive that without taking damage. So first roll, no damage. Second roll, no damage. They did not match. And third and final roll, they do not match. Boom, the cook got away from that without taking any wounds. Now here's the shepherd. This is not going to be good. We have liquid luck if we need to use it because this could be bloody as hell. All right. First roll. No match. Plus it was a double. Second roll. No match. And it was a double. Oh my gosh. We might get out of this unscathed. Oh, why did I say that? Oh my God. Are you kidding me? And right there is why you don't say things like that. I'm going to use Liquid Luck. Discard to reroll your character die, applying only the second result. Chapter die is a wisdom. You know what? This may have been a really stupid thing to do because the shepherd is so wisdom heavy on this die. He is! Shoot! So we lost that item and he still takes two wounds. All right, but you know what? Overall, that wasn't completely terrible, but it wasn't the best either. Okay, next chapter. Okay, this looks like a friendly guy. Bringing his cart to a halt beside you, an intriguing stranger insists you sample his latest brew, a healing elixir, he claims. A spiked club dangles from his belt, and keen as you are to move on, you feel it would be unwise to refuse. How bad can it be? Okay, this is interesting. You, which is the shepherd, gosh, we need to switch that you token but in this case it may have been a wise thing because look at this you the shepherd must choose an option sip a small amount and gain one hp or try to roll might in one attempt and you'd gain three hp the elixir warns your innards or it's or a failure it's foul smelling and toxic you vomit lose one hp uh, we're definitely not going to try to roll might with the shepherd. We are going to cut our losses and just gain one HP sipping a small amount. All right, so that wasn't bad at all. Just for the record, shepherd is at 11 HP. Cook is at 15 HP. And before I even look at that, I am switching the U token to the cook. So the cook is now the leader of our merry band of misfits here. Okay, here we go. Oh, Why? This chamber is flanked by caves and littered with gnawed bones. Of course it is. A guttural growl rings out as something emerges. As a group, choose one option, then begin combat. We can take him head on. He only has two dice. But he does three wounds every round of combat. Or use hit and run tactics. He only does two wounds, but he has five dice. Um, no. We are tackling him head on. 
at the risk of three wounds, but we only have to get rid of two dice. All right, folks, this could make or break us right now. He doesn't start out with anything, but we'll see what he has. He has a cunning and a might. All right, not terrible, especially with the cook, who those are his best two traits. Shepard struggles a little bit there, but all right, here we go. Combat begins now. Cunning and a might. And we do not... Okay, here we go. Making use of our items. The shepherd rolled one of the cunnings. So the cunning goes right here. And we remove a cunning. Now the cook rolled cunning as well. We need it to be might. But don't forget, we have this rusted flail once per round of combat. When you roll cunning, you can roll again and choose. So here we go. This is our chance to re-roll this cunning and see if the cook can get one of his mites that he's bragging about all the time. And he does not. However, it is a shield. So we will definitely choose that option. So the shepherd takes three wounds. One, two, three. The cook takes none. And we move on to the next round of combat. Come on, we need to get rid of this might here. And we do. They both, in fact, roll mites. So that was fantastic. And we get an item for that as well. The item is, we could definitely use something to heal the shepherd here. It's another liquid luck. All right, not bad. Discard to re-roll your character die, applying the second result. We'll give that to the shepherd. In fact... <laughs> Let's go ahead and swap the shield. So now the shepherd has the shield and we'll keep, we'll give the, well, we'll give the liquid luck to the cook or should we leave it on the shepherd? Let's leave it on the shepherd because the shepherd only has eight wounds left. We're leaving the U token on the cook though. All right, here we go. Now, oh good God, you have been hunt. <clears throat> you have been hunted by ferocious castle hounds. You become separated, and each of you must fight alone. Roll a chapter die in front of each player to represent the hound attacking them. The hounds can sense weakness. Players with less than 8, eight HP roll two dice instead of one. Begin combat. Oh my gosh, thankfully the shepherd is at exactly eight. If he was at less than eight, he would have two hounds on him. Oh my gosh, how fortunate it or we okay so combat special no player can rest until the hounds attacking them are defeated they may then help another player defeat theirs a player aiding another takes damage as normal must declare who they're aiding before they roll all right so these wolves do a wound apiece and it's just one die one single die all right so here's the one attacking the shepherd it is a cunning, which is not the best. And then the one attacking the cook is a wisdom. Oh my God, no. Now we've seen the cook roll wisdom before. Holy crud. Okay, so the shepherd is going to battle his first. The shepherd needs a cunning, but he takes a wound. All right, here we go. Okay, no, he doesn't. He has a shield, but he didn't roll a cunning. So we're going to do that again. And it is a cunning. All right. So he walked away with no wounds. Now, does he help out the cook? If he does, he would also take a wound if they don't roll wisdom. But I just feel like we should because this is the best chance we have. So basically, it's like a regular combat now. Boom. We have this wisdom. And in fact, now we could rest the cook, couldn't we? Oh, no player can rest until the hounds attacking them are defeated. So I guess the shepherd could rest, but we need him to help the cook. So no one's resting. We need a wisdom here. And we do not get it. It's t just tons and tons of might. Let's go ahead and use the shepherd's liquid luck. This didn't work so well for us last time, but we are going to re-roll the shepherd die. He has, he has, I mean, my God, he has two thirds chance of rolling a wisdom here. Come on. There it is. All right. Boom. No one took any wounds from that. That was fantastic. All right. So then we will get an item and the item is 
A uh, partially rotten apple, discard to restore one HP. Let's just give that to the shepherd right now and eat it. All right, perfect. So shepherd's at nine HP, cook is at 15 HP. We are looking not bad here, folks. Oh God. Your spirit is suddenly wrenched from your body. Paralyzed, you can only watch as it drifts above you. You, which is the cook, are incapacitated. To restore your corporeal balance, the other players must roll in unison, keeping track of any wisdom rolled until they've rolled a total wisdom equal to the number of players. After each attempt, you, the cook, loses one HP until the unless the total has been reached. After three failed attempts, the curse is broken. Your spirit returns to its body. This couldn't be better. The shepherd just needs to roll two wisdom. Unfortunately, the cook is going to take a wound no matter what, because the shepherd doesn't have any double wisdom. So it's going to take at least two rolls to get this wisdom. All right, here we go. Nope, so that is a wound. The cook takes one wound. Shepherd. Okay, there, but he takes a second wound. This is going to be the third and final attempt to get the second wisdom. Otherwise, the cook takes a third wound. He does. Damn it. Are you kidding me? The shepherd only rolled one wisdom there. All right. But anyway, we move on. No item for that. Oh, my good Lord. Where there was once flesh and fur, the bones of this skeletal beast now crackle with the menacing power of dark magic. Begin combat. Combat special. Whenever you would remove a chapter die by hitting this enemy, roll it instead. If the result is wisdom, do not remove it. Put it back wisdom side up. All right. This is both good and bad. If it was going to be a trait that we would put wisdom side up or, uh, you know, up. It would be wisdom we would want. Of course, the shepherd is not rolling his wisdom like we would like him to. So maybe that's not the best. But either way, this is going to be brutal. Two wounds each time. He starts out with a cunning and a wisdom plus two more dice. And he can regenerate. He has a one in three chance of regenerating every time we get rid of one of these dice. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Look at all these cunnings. It's freaking insane. Okay, here we go. Round one of combat. Let's see what we can knock out here. All right, and we have, oh, not bad. The shepherd rolled a wisdom and the cook rolled a cunning. However, we are going to use this to re-roll it because, thanks to our flail because we could potentially get a double cunning. So we have one cunning no matter what. Oh my gosh, and we did. We rolled the double cunning shield combo. So we got rid of two of those cunnings, and he doesn't take any wounds. The shepherd would have taken two, but because of the shield, he only takes one. Okay, that's not bad. We have one cunning left. Come on, let's knock it out right here. And we don't. The shepherd, though, does roll a shield, so the shepherd won't take any wounds. However, the cook does take two wounds. Yikes. All right, here we go. Round whatever. Okay, boom. There is the final cunning, thanks to the shepherd. And that is that. We have defeated the skeletal dragon-looking thing. And for our efforts, we got the golden axe. In combat, roll the golden axe die along with your character die and remove any one chapter dice. Lose one HP and discard the golden axe. So if you roll that axe symbol, it's like a wild. But if you roll the skull... You lose the axe, and you also take a wound. Let's go ahead and give that to the cook, because still right now he can take a few more wounds if he absolutely has to. But the most important thing is we have this golden axe die. And just in case you aren't familiar with that, it does have the golden axe symbol as well as a skull. It has a blank shield, and then also two of each of the three other traits. All right. Oh my gosh, we're getting close. We only have four chapters left, and then we have to draw a boss, which I neglected to do at the beginning. Okay, here we go. Oh, yikes. Okay, lots of traps there, but let's find out what this is all about. At the end of this winding passage, a wooden chest covered in cobwebs is protected by several vicious-looking traps. As a group, choose an option. Move on. It's not worth the risk. Turn the next chapter card, or we could risk it. Nominate a player to try and retrieve items from the chest. They must roll cunning in one attempt and may try this as many times as there are players. For each success, draw an item card. Two on a double cunning. 
For each failure, the nominated player loses 2 HP. Oh my gosh. The cook has a double cunning. Could you imagine that? Try this as many times as there are players. So he could try to roll cunning up to two times. And for each cunning, it's an item. Two items on a double cunning. So he could get four items here, which is unlikely. That's a one in six chance. But for every failure, the cook would lose two HP. Folks, I like our items. I don't want to lose any more health or kind of middle of the road on health right now. Shepard has eight. Cook has ten. So let's just move on. I know. How boring, right? But you know what? We are getting so close. <laughs> anyway. Oh, of course. You hear a scream from behind and turn around too late to avoid the clutches of a lurching ghoul. As a group, choose an option. You you get away, but you, in this case, the cook, loses two HP, shaking off the ghoul. Or we could fight, begin combat. You are so fear struck that any wisdom you roll has no effect. It does two damage each time. It would have three dice. Could we? The question here is, and the cook who would, who is terrible at wisdom anyway? Do we go after it? Now, of course, the question is: is one item, which is what we would get, is one item worth it? Do we think we could knock this out in one attempt? Otherwise, we both lose two wounds. Technically, the shepherd would only lose one. Um, we have that extra dice. An item could be handy. It's basically a trade-off of an item for a single wound because the cook would lose two wounds if we ran. Let's go for it. All right. You know what? Let's go for it. Okay. So it starts off with a wisdom and then two more dice. And it is one of each. No, it's not. It's two wisdom and a might. Shoot. All right. Anyways. Oh, fudge. Because I forgot, you know, the cook's special die here, even if it rolled wisdom, that would have no effect. So we are totally beholden to the shepherd to roll wisdom here, and he does not have any side of his die that would let him roll two wisdom. So no matter what, we are not going to knock this out in a single round of combat. Okay, this may have been a big mistake. All right, here we go. All right, so the shepherd actually does roll a shield and also one of the wisdoms. And then, oh, that's such a damn shame because the cook got rid of the might and this axe, you know what? That's a good question. Technically, he did not roll wisdom, but this would allow him to choose a wisdom. Would this be able to choose wisdom since he is so fear struck any wisdom he rolled this chapter has no effect is this considered rolling a wisdom if we would choose this to be a wisdom oh this is so tough oh my gosh what do we do here oh my gosh do you know what oh, fudge i feel like we should in, I don't know, because I feel like I don't want to get through this whole dungeon and then say, well, the only reason I got through of it was because I took this easy way out. So I'm going to have the cook take the two wounds. I'm going to say that he could not choose wisdom since he's too afraid to use wisdom because of that thing. And hope for dear Lord that the shepherd will roll wisdom. And in fact, let's just rest the cook then because the cook has no wisdom. It's up to the shepherd. So the cook just gained one HP. Let's see if the shepherd can knock this wisdom out. Two thirds chance. And he does. All right. So you know what? I feel good about that. We didn't take the easy way out and we still knocked that out. Boom. All right. And we get an item, which is partially rotten apple. Discard one HP. And let's go ahead and do that. And we are going to give it to the shepherd. Bouncing up to nine. So both characters are now at nine HP. That is pretty good. All right. I think we're okay with the item situation and the person in first place. Actually, now let's switch it back over to the shepherd because he has that shield. Oh my gosh. 
You interrupt a beast man devouring a fresh kill. He raises his head, Sanu dangling from his gore-smeared mouth, then charges. You must try to roll might or a double. Oh, no! No, 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 no! The cook would have been so much better at this. Of course, every time I switch who's the leader of the party, it then favors who had the U token the last time. Okay, so the shepherd has to try to roll might or double one attempt. He has a 50-50 shot of doing that. If he does, you react quickly and dive aside, but we still begin combat. But if you if he fails, he's slammed to the floor, loses two HP, and still we begin combat. All right, shepherd. 50-50 shot. He needs might or a double. Son of a gun. Now he only takes one wound of that two, thanks to his shield. But we still begin combat. All right, so he this beast starts out with a might and a cunning and two more. And they are two more mites. Holy cow. All right, here we go. We have the golden axe. We have the shield. We have the flail. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The golden axe is a two-handed weapon. Thankfully, we haven't you know, had used this flail as well. So let's, I guess let's just say we had put the flail over here for now, even though after this, I'm going to switch these items all around because I'd rather have the cook with the flail. But you know what? Doesn't matter. Thankfully, that flail hasn't come into play while he's had that axe. At least I don't think it has. Oh, fudge. Okay, here we go. Three dice to try to knock out as much of this as we can. Okay. All right. So here's what we got. Of course, the shepherd rolls wisdom, which is completely useless. The cook rolled a shield, though, and one of the mites. So cook takes no wounds, but the shepherd takes a wound thanks to the shield. All right. Second round of combat. And the shepherd rolls a damn wisdom again. Thankfully, someone's on the ball here. The cook, look at all this. The cook rolled four symbols. Two mites and two cunnings. Boom, that's all gone. So even though the shepherd's just constantly rolling wisdom whenever we don't need him to. So this guy has been defeated, and the item is a decayed blade. Once per round of combat, when you roll wisdom, you can choose again. Choose which of the two results to apply. All right, so we are going to get rid of this flail and give him this blade because he's the best at wisdom. So he has this nice blade, this nice shield... And the cook has the golden axe still. Now, do we switch the U token? The reason I question that is because even though the cook has more health, the shepherd has the shield. For now, let's leave it as is. All right. The, here we go. Last chapter card before the boss. Oh, good night. As these three old women draw near, you notice their feet do not touch the ground. With a cackle, they lunge, probing for you with withered hands and rotten tongues. Begin combat! Combat special. The first time the risen hags are defeated, before drawing an item card, roll a chapter die. If the result is wisdom, they regenerate. You must restart combat and defeat them a second time. And you know what this reminds me of? And you guys are probably shouting at the screen the entire time. I totally forgot to re-roll these dice if they were wisdoms or not. <clears throat> all right, so how can we fairly do this? We obviously got rid of all four of them. Let's re-roll all four of these and see which ones are wisdom. I am so sorry, but this is the only way we'll be able to get out of this and say that we did it at least somewhat fairly. All right, we have a wisdom that we still had to add to this thingamabob. I don't remember if we had the golden axe at the time, but let's go ahead and roll these, see if we can get a wisdom out of this. And we do. So at the very least, if we had to put one of these back and it was a wisdom, there it goes. I think we still have to roll it again, though, and see if it's a wisdom again. And it is not. All right, so... Hopefully that at least somewhat makes it seem like, you know, a little bit fairer. In fact, because we would have had to still have one left. Oh boy. I don't know. Let's just move on at this point. 
Okay. So, for the first time, the, these guys are defeated. Before drawing an item card, we have to roll chapter dice, and if it's wisdom, they regenerate. So, similar to that dragon, you have to restart combat and defeat them a second time. Thankfully, it's only a second time. All right, so they have one wisdom, and they also have two additional dice, and that is a wisdom and a cunning. All right. Let's see if we can knock this out. Hopefully we can and move on to the boss. All right, so the cook rolls a might and a shield, so that just protects him. The shepherd actually rolled a wisdom. Do we want to try to roll it again? Choose which of the two results? In fact, yeah, because we actually do have a better side of this die that could be a wisdom and a cunning. So we have a wisdom no matter what. And there it is. We actually rolled the wisdom cunning combo. Get rid of those two and neither one of them take any wounds thanks to their shields. All right, here we go. Last wisdom die. And oh no. First of all, the shepherd rolled a mite for some reason. The cook rolled a shield, but he also rolled the skull. God, how unfortunate is that? Right before the boss, we lose the golden axe. We also take a wound, and he doesn't take two. Uh, he doesn't take another wound from these hags, but the shepherd does. All right, here we go. Trying to get this last wisdom. Should we rest the cook? <sighs> the cook only has a one in six chance of rolling wisdom, so let's actually rest the cook and roll with the shepherd. Come on. And no, the shepherd takes a wound. Oh, sheets. I'm going to rest the cook again and roll this damn shepherd again. And finally, yes, he rolls the wisdom. Now, boom, I'm not going to forget this time. The first time they're defeated, roll chapter die. If this is a wisdom, they regenerate. Oh, God, come on. They have a one in three chance of regenerating. And they regenerate. Gosh, darn it. So that's the wisdom, and then they have two more dice again. Oh, God. And they're both cunnings. Okay, here we go. We're battling them again, this time without the golden axe. And we have... Oh, the cook is rolling might. But the shepherd did that same thing again. Wisdom, cunning, gone. No wounds. The cook, though, does take a wound. And it's a cunning. So we're going to leave them both in and see if we can knock out this last cunning. And we don't. And the cook rolled his one and only wisdom. Are you kidding me? So they both take a wound. Oh, God. In fact, do we rest the shepherd here? Oh, my gosh. The shepherd has a one in three chance of rolling a cunning. I'm going to roll them both. Come on, just one more cunning. Thank gosh. Okay, so that knocks out the cunning. And we don't re-roll it again. It was just a second time. So we do get an item here, which is the healing verses. Whenever you roll a double, you may restore one HP to any character. Holy cow, that's fantastic. All right, well, we'll give that to the cook. We'll leave the shield and everything just fine. I don't think the U token matters on bosses but just in case it does let's put it down here the cook is going into this final boss battle with eight health the shepherd into the final boss battle with four health but he has a blade and a shield we like the item setup here are the four bosses we have not yet seen i believe these are a combination of base game bosses and kickstarter bosses all right here we go this is the one who are we battling this time? The shapeshifter. I can assume the form of your greatest fear. Doubles only score single hits against the shapeshifter. At the end of each round, if the shapeshifter has not been defeated, it changes form. Reroll all its remaining chapter dice. Look at all that. That's going to be six dice. Does three wounds each time, folks. Can we do it? Can we defeat this shapeshifter oh my gosh here we go it has two mites which is the cook's favorite thing to roll 
and two wisdoms, which should be the shepherd's favorite thing to roll, but really haven't been. And then two more. And they are another wisdom and a cunning. All right, so here we go. Here's the layout. And don't forget, after each round of combat, any of those dice that are left get re-rolled. Okay, here we go. And don't forget, doubles only score single hits. Oh, God. All right, so what do we have here? We have the shepherd with that. And we have, I'm sorry, we, yeah, the shepherd has that. And the cook rolled his one and only wisdom. Are you kidding me? But you know what? That's not a bad thing. The shepherd picks, though, the wisdom or the cunning to get rid of. Let's go with the wisdom. So we're getting rid of two wisdoms here. And... Do we want to use the blade? No, the cook didn't roll a double. So, unfortunately, the shepherd takes no wounds. The cook takes three wounds. One, two, three. Yikes. All right, come on. We can't take three wounds every time here. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? The cook took has a wisdom. The shepherd has a wisdom, too. But if we roll a wisdom, we can re-roll it and choose a second, the other side if we want. Oh, are you kidding me? They were both wisdom. So that's one more wisdom. The shepherd takes two wounds. The cook takes three. One, two, three. Oh, God. So there's no way we'll knock it out right here. And it doesn't even... So we... Oh, shit. What do we do? Do we hope someone rolls shields? They would both have to roll shields. The shepherd could rest, and we would just hope to God that the cook rolls a shield. They can't both rest. And if they both take a, take wounds here... Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Oh, this is going to suck. All right, so we're resting the shepherd. Because the idea here is he is now at three, so if he takes wounds next time, the shield would reduce it to two, so he'd still be around. The cook, though, even if he rested, it wouldn't matter because he's because he would take the full three anyway. All right, so anyway, so we're rolling the cook. Basically, we have a one in three chance of surviving here if this is a double, only because it would be a shield and he could heal something. So this is essentially for the game. If this is a if this is anything but a double, we lose. Right? I'm trying to think of any other reason why we what else we could do. All right, here we go. Damn it! No! God, we were so freaking close. Okay, so the cook rolls a mite, which does get rid of a mite, but unfortunately that's it. The shepherd rested. He takes no wounds, but the cook takes three wounds. One, two, three. So he's at negative, what, two? He's at negative one health right now. All right, folks. This was our third attempt through the Dark Castle, and my God, what a failure it was. Let's once. Oh, God, I hate having to do this. Actually, I love doing this, but at the same time, I hate it because that means we didn't win. All right. The shapeshifter. How did the shapeshifter kill us in the death book? Page 100. All right. Here we go. The shapeshifter. As you attempt to land a desperate final blow. Oh, you know what? Good God, I kept forgetting to re-roll the dice that he had left. Oh, well, either way. As you attempt to land a desperate final blow, the shapeshifter catches your fist and pulls you closer. Just then, it changes, enveloping itself into the form of a void. The dark mass begins a slow advance along your arm, inch by inch. You cry out and try to pull away, but the darkness holds you in place as it draws... Over you, your limbs are steadily erased, replaced by emptiness, and your body becomes nothing more than a gaping portal to a sky full of stars somewhere beyond. Soon, all that remains of you is the void, a black hole in the center of the chamber into which your fellow prisoners are immediately swallowed, tumbling into the endless dark from whence the shapeshifter came. The portal closes and the chamber falls silent. Your adventure ends here. Folks, that's it. 
That's it. We've lost. Oh my gosh. I was hoping to bring a little joy to anyone who's stuck at home during these times, but all I've probably done is added misery with another failed attempt to escape the damn dark castle. All right, well, it's not over. We're going to keep trying. We're going to try until we get out of this damn thing. All right, folks, thank you all so much for watching. I do truly appreciate it. And until next time.